chance we can get to praise your name, God. Even if it's out in a parking lot, God, we will come and worship you, God. Come on, we love you, Lord. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Come on.
the Lord Church. How y'all doing today? Everybody, it's, got, it's a little warm, right? And we're so used to air conditioning, but you know, if y'all was going to the lake, you'd be fine. If you was, well, if you was, if you was going uh, to do something that was entertaining, it'd be okay. So uh, let's challenge everybody to start coming out when we, we, we bought a tent. All right, everybody here, we bought a tent. All right, so I'm hoping it'll be here by next Sunday. If we have to continue doing this, we bought a tent, uh, and we're going to be, we'll set that thing up, and those that want to go into the tent can, those that don't can keep doing what we're doing right here, but uh, the heat don't really bother me. Does it, 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 I, I, I work in it all the time, so it don't really bother me. I'm out in it all the time, and when I was younger and I was driving truck all the time, I would... Uh, they have that old dog house right here, no air conditioning, the motor heat coming through, and I'd be driving I'd be driving down through a, a place called Fireball, California, it'd be 115 degrees, and I'd be there just driving, everybody would be talking about how hot it is, and I'm like, eh, right? We need to sweat a little bit every once in a while, get the impurities out of your body. Are you hearing me? God's a good God. How many of you love the Lord today? Let's give the Lord a cheer right now so everybody in the neighborhood can hear us. Everybody that is hearing us, please worship with us this morning. We're worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Yeah. And we all, we just make it available for everyone to enter in and uh, worship God with us. Amen. And uh, we're not going to let nothing interfere and bother us. We're just going to be here to serve the Lord and give God all the glory. Amen. I'm not even going to let that saw over there bother me. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Matt right now. Praise God. How's everybody doing? I, I couldn't hear you. There we go. Now, I dressed for the occasion. I knew it was going to be warm, so I wore shorts. Amen? If you guys need an a envelope, uh, a tithe and offering envelope, go ahead and raise your hand, and ushers will get one to you. If not, we got the uh, uh, kiosk thing in the back. Uh, the church, you guys can go in there. We got Venmo, which is to pastor's number. Uh, it's 209-662-4019. almost forgot his number. Yeah, you know, if the tin doesn't work out, I got an idea. Maybe we just get a couple doughboys and uh, <laughs> all swim and, and have church. <laughs> Baptize every week, right? By the spirit and by the water. Can you see me now? All right. I feel like, uh, you know, the Lord never moves backwards. And even though it feels like we got to go inside for a few weeks or a month, and we got to come back out here and have the Lord knows what he's doing. Amen. And I, I talked to, uh, last time we were outside that, you know, the Bible tells us to obey our uh, governors and kings, right? So if the, if the governor's orders are us to be outside and have church, maybe God has a reason for that. Maybe a people, few people in these houses right here need to hear the word of God, amen? Maybe somebody's dying over there, they need a, a word, right? They need to know that Jesus loves them, amen? See, everything works together, right? God has a purpose and a plan for everything. But I, one thing I do notice, and... and one thing I do notice is, is since this pandemic, uh, this thing has happened that the, the crowd has gotten a little bit smaller, right? And I, I was asking the Lord, I go, Lord, what, I go, you think at times like this people would press in more? You think people would be more faithful, right? And the Lord's like, you remember the story of Gideon's army? Everyone re read that story? Everyone read that in the Bible? Yeah. God's going to do what he has to do with who he has to do it with, amen? And if people aren't going to come to the house of God, to his sanctuary, right, the place that he sanctified to be his house, right, the rock, then he's going to do with the people that, he's going to do what he has to do with the people that do come. Amen? And maybe we're Gideon's army. What God has to do is still going to get done no matter who does it, right? No matter who little, whether it's 300 or 3,000 or 30,000, 300 million, God's going to do what God has to do. Amen? And God can do what he has to do in your life. Right? No matter 
a circumstance. You know, it says the 300 took on as many people as I could see, right? And destroyed them. And that's real. Amen? So we can, God can take 300 and destroy as, as many people as far as you can see. Just think what he can do in your life. Right? Think what he can do with this group here. Right? In this city of, of what, 50,000 people? We have 50 people here in a city of 50,000 people. That seems like pretty good odds to me. Right? Yes. Amen? Amen. That means we got our work cut out for us. Amen? Giving. What's the reason we give? Does anybody got an answer? What's the reason I'm asking? What's the reason we give? Out of our heart, right? Because we love the Lord, right? I give Him our time. Give Him out of our abundance, right? Because I love Him so much. Just like I love my wife, I give her, I give my wife anything she wants, anything she asks for, within reason. <laughs> Right? Anything that I can do to please my wife. And that's the same with the Lord. Anything that I can do that pleases Him, I will do. No matter the cost. Amen? Because He gave the ultimate cost for us. Right? He gave everything for us. So when He asks me for a little bit of something, I have no problem giving that to Him. Amen? Because I love Him. Amen? And that's how we're supposed to give, out of love. So you guys got your tithe and offering together. Go ahead and, and lift it up. You can uh, Pastor Mike, way back there, to go ahead and yell. Pray. She'll come and collect. So raise your hand, hop up and down, dance, do whatever, hump your horn, and she'll make her way around. And when she when she gets done with that offering, I, I got I got one more thing to do. kids the kids are going to do what the kids are going to do you can't ask them to sit in the car sit, sit still for an hour and then if they want to play let them play those are god's children if we can't if we can't teach them to enjoy the house of the lord then how are we going to how are they ever going to want to come here when they get older amen so listen i don't know if, if anybody's made their way up here or not but the church invested and I say it's an investment. We invested in some really high quality cameras and, and monitors and computers and routers so that we wouldn't have no problem, more problems or issues with cell phones. Everybody hear me? So we invested in some high quality stuff so we don't have to deal with cell phones. So when we go live, when we go on YouTube, it looks professional, sounds professional. There's a little few more little bugs to work out. We're getting it, but we're going there. Well, the church made an investment so we could invest in people's lives online if they are physically disabled or maybe they live in another town and they still want to hear Prayer Valley. Amen? So Prayer Valley's got something the other churches ain't got. Amen? So maybe they want to sit. sit maybe, they want to, maybe they live in another town. Maybe they're, they're disabled and they can't come and they want to hear Prayer Valley. Mississippi, Texas, Oregon. We got, yeah, everywhere. So... This is an investment in people's lives. Amen? So I'm going to do something that the church, this church, doesn't really do too often. I'm going to ask you guys to help invest in people's lives and help invest in the outreach of, of, of televised TV, televised church. Amen? Amen? Marty's going to come around with envelopes and hand them out. Now, I was... Uh, I asked to get 20 people to do $200, but I'm not going to put a limit on God. Amen. And I'm not going to put a, a, a cap on it. So anything that you can give, take, raise your hand, and then give it to Mark. And then Mark will come around and give you an envelope. Amen. And we're going to try to raise some funds to help re, to help replenish the church. Because we're going to try to get the food bank going back up. I'm going to try to replenish the funds of, of this camera. It was, it was really expensive. It was five grand. It was five grand. So... For this camera equipment, so the Lord's put it on 
on your heart to help reinvest in the people's lives, reinvest, re reinvest in the church, go ahead and raise your hand. Marty will get you an envelope. Whatever you can give. I'm not going to put pressure on nobody. And if you're at home watching this, uh, Venmo, uh, Venmo to 209 662-4019 and then if there's a I, I don't know how Venmo works I'm not a Venmo guy but I think you can put a note on there uh, right yeah. you can put a note on there that says hey uh, camera offering or special offering etc etc listen it, and this kind of giving is, is really where your faith and your, and your blessing lies it is right it's really where you like man I, I don't know about that it's when you don't know that you gotta know the Lord, Amen. It's when they, what you don't know, you gotta trust on the Lord. Marty, let me know when you're all done, so we can pray over this offering. Hey, if you get too hot. Sitting there and waiting on the Lord. 
shall, they shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. Now, the people that are mounting up with wings like eagles and walking and running, that don't seem like, sound like people that are just waiting around for the next big move. That sounds like people that are doing something, right? God started dealing with me, and the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 3 that God has dealt to all of us the measure of faith. And I want to talk to you all today about your faith life. You have a faith life. You ain't thinking you just have a life, but you're supposed to have a faith life, I should say. Can you say amen? We are to actually have a faith life. We're actually living a faith life, and if we're not living a faith life, then we're just existing in life. We're just living an existing life, and that's not God. God is a God of faith. So I don't know about how many people are here today that have made a decision that you're going to go ahead and progress in your Christianity, progress in your life by faith, or if you're just going to depend upon the world. But I can tell you right now that we're coming to a time when you're not going to be able to depend on the world like you have. In fact, you see how easy it is. Just in three or four months, your dependency upon the world has been shaken like never before. Amen? And if that doesn't direct your eyes towards heaven, if that doesn't direct your eyes towards Jesus, if that doesn't direct your eyes towards the things of God and how God wants it, I don't know what it's going to take. Can you say amen? So I don't know, uh, I don't know how many ways us messengers, I'm a messenger, can say it, but again, I have to challenge you about your faith today. I, we, we, we are definitely in perilous times. I don't know about you, but I know we're in perilous times and the chaos is real. Trouble on every side. We are in a war for the lives of our families, for the, the, for the, the house of God, for the kingdom of God. The Bible says that the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And for those of you that don't understand that, that's talking about us. We have to begin to rise up and have a violent faith. And I'm not talking about faith that is so violent that it's, it, it, it beats up on people. I'm talking about faith that's so violent that you attack the spiritual devils, those devils that are coming against you, that you, you engage yourself in warfare and you don't back off. You take, you, you stand up, you believe God, you put your hand forth, and you rebuke those devils in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? We're definitely in times of, of, uh, 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 of desperate times, and many people, including Christians, have been so dependent on this world that they have become victims of warfare. They're victims. You, you live like victims, act like victims, think like victims. And, and you know what? Here's the thing. I want to tell you something. Everybody can have a bad day, and everybody can have a good day. Are you listening? I don't know how this works, uh, this thing here. But God wants you to live victoriously. And we allow ourselves too many privileges according to our emotions and the things of this world. I don't feel like praying today. I don't feel like going to church today. I don't feel like, I just, I woke up and I just don't feel like worshiping God. I just don't, you know what, I just need some time to myself. I just need a, some alone time, right? And, and what happens with that is that you're telling God, I, I, I'm, you're dissing him. You're telling him, I don't need you today. I don't need, and then when all hell breaks loose in your life, the first thing you do is try to run to God. And since you don't, since you're having a problem with your faith and you can't get that breakthrough, you can't break through those brazen strongholds that the devil has put on your life and you try and try, then you start running to everybody else and everybody else is the ones that told you you need to live a victorious life, not just look for a victory once in a while. So let me say this first off. God never created you to be a victim or a child of uh, living at the mercy of this world. God called you to, you to be victorious and to live under his mercy. Amen? You are not to be dependent upon this world. This world did not give its life for you. This world did not do for you what Jesus Christ did for you. This world did not create you. This world does not have a plan for you. The devil has a plan for you. Hello? But God has a greater plan for you. First off, this world's mercy is false mercy. It's not real. You understand that? I watched these two movie stars. This little boy, this little boy, you know, he 
this pit bull was attacking his sister. You guys saw the story? And he jumped out and he saved her and he got in between and the pit bull ripped his face all up. And he said, if somebody was going to die, it, ha it was going to be me, not my little sister. He's a hero. He done something awesome. He did something great. I saw these two movie stars call him and tell him, you know, Iron Man called him and he's going to send him a prize. And Captain America, the actor, called him and he's going to send him a shield and all this stuff. And I started thinking about the fantasy world in which we live in. And I started thinking about how Hollywood has groomed the young people to find their, their, their idols and they're to find their idols in the world. And, and they call that, you know, that they're reaching out and that's merciful and they're showing charity. And that's all false humility. You understand? It's false humility. It's, 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 just, it's just a ploy to get on the good side of people. It's just, a, it's just put them out. See, they're, they're all a bunch of uh, attention whores. You understand that? They're attention whores, so they'll use anything they can, any platform they can to get attention, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. You know, I heard somebody say one time, even bad attention is better than no attention, and we see that in this world. We see all these young women that are prostituting themselves in Hollywood on the camera. You know, it's all about how many guys they slept with and, and the, 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 the way, you know, they got reality shows and, and Hollywood shows and, and – uh, the married wives of the mafia, this, that, and that, and this. They got all this stuff on there. They're prostituting themselves for 15 minutes of fame. That's what this world has to offer, but it's all false fame. It's not real. One day they're, gonna, they're either going to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, or they're going to split hell wide open. You understand? So let me say this. God never created you to be a victim or a child living at the mercy of this world, or the false mercy of this world. So it's time that we begin to rise as a child of the Most High God and begin to shine as a beacon of light to all those around us, even those that it offends. You understand? I'll be honest with you. If your light ain't offending somebody, you probably ain't shining. That's the real truth. Now, I ain't saying that we got to go around offending people on, person, uh, I mean, on purpose, but if they get offended because you're loving the hell out of them and telling them the truth, then that's on them. If you continue to depend uh, uh, of this, to be dependent upon this world, let me assure you that you are a victim and not a victor, and you will live at the mercy of this world, and whatever happens in this world will affect you in such ways that it will shake you to the core. But when you are not at the mercy of this world, but you live upon the mercy, upon the mercy and under the mercy of the Most High God, when you depend upon the Lord, when you trust in Him and you have your faith in God, when the, when the earth shakes, you might feel the shaking, but it don't move your heart. You might see it around you, but it don't change your view of the Lord. Huh? In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, it is, I'm going to paraphrase, you can read it. Paul and Sylvanus, Sylvanus and Timothy were encouraging the Thessalonians, thanking them because of their faith. Paul wrote this. He wrote this about the Thessalonians. He said, your faith grows, everybody say grows, exceedingly. Your faith grows exceedingly. Are you hearing me? I mean, how many of us can say that? Or have that said about us? I mean, how long have you been saved? How long have you been serving God? How long have you been going to church? How long have you been hit and missing? I mean, can the Lord actually say of you? Could he send a messenger to you and say, thank you, because your faith grows exceedingly? Or could he say, or would most of them come to you and say, man, you better stop being such a flake. Because it's going to cost you. It's costing you already. It's costing your children. It's going to cost your children's children. If you continue to be a flake, huh? Paul said, we boast about you, Thessalonians. We boast about you guys. When we go to other churches, we boast about you guys. He says, you guys are steadfast in your faith. Even through affliction, even through persecution, even through hard times, 
Even through financial struggles, you guys endure. You guys are bad to the bone. Come on. Verse 5 says, This is evidence that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. This is evidence that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Go through something. I'm quitting. Somebody burped and it hurt my feelings. I think the pastor was talking to me. I am. Anybody out there feel like I'm talking to you? I am. Amen. I cannot say this enough. We must grow in our faith because the world we live in is growing in sin. I said we must grow in our faith because the world is growing in sin. We must grow in our faith because the world is growing in sin. And if the world has its way, you're going to grow in sin and not in faith. Our spiritual arsenal must be updated with God's freshest substance. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, huh? And the substance of things hoped for. Our, our spiritual warfare must be updated through prayer, through study, through the word, through worship, huh? through commitment, through obedience, through discipline, all of the things that are good for us. And as God's our faith begins to get updated, we begin to grow in the Lord. If you ain't growing, you dead. Our spiritual arsenal can't be updated unless we're growing in faith. If not, you're just going to do the same thing you did last year. You're going to use the same faith you used last year to do the same thing you did last year. When we're in a new season, we're in a new time, we're in a new dimension, a new dispensation. The world is not in the condition it was in last year, and neither are you. Listen to me. Faith is not merely a one-time event through which we are saved. It is a continuous way of life. We live by faith. We live by faith, an ever-increasing faith, a growing faith. If you want your life to grow, then you need your faith to grow. And your faith grows when you begin to move out of your comfort zone, when you begin to do some, something different than what you've always done, when you begin to say what you've never said, you're going to do what you've never done. Are you hearing me? But you have to do it. You can't just be challenged to do it. And Pastor preached a really good message. He just, yeah. I mean, you don't want everybody to outgrow you. There's people leave churches because everybody outgrows them. They're wondering what happened. What happened was they missed the train. They missed the bus. The bus came and they didn't get on. They stayed the same. God says he's the same. He didn't say we're going to stay the same. Can you say amen? It's a continuous way of life. The faith life, the God life from salvation forward. We must increase our execution of faith. And if you're not doing things to challenge your faith, shame on you. I've never witnessed anybody. You need to do it. I've never been faithful in my tithe and offering. You need to get there. I've never attended church faithfully. You need to get there. I've never read the word and, and, and practiced it. You need to get there. I've never prayed like I, I need. I, I've never really prayed like have a, you know, a set time and, and, and really prayed the prayer of faith. You need to start praying the prayer of faith. I've never really done this or done that. I've never prayed for anybody that was sick and laid hands upon them. You need to do that. You need to challenge yourself, the, the execution of your faith, to move beyond the boundaries of your comfort zone. And it all starts at home. I don't know how you can pray with a guy walking down the street, but you can't pray with your own wife, your own kids. I don't know how you can humble yourself in the sight of people you don't know, but not humble yourself in the sight of those that you do know. Well, they know me. Huh? Well, maybe they need to know the new you. Maybe they need to know the new creature. The longer you live, the 
greater your confidence and faith in God should become. Hello? Not less. The faith that you got saved with, that should have been this big, and the faith you're walking in now should be this big. I said the faith that you got saved with was like this. It was like a grain of mustard seed. Now it needs to be like this. You need to continue planting it. Continue planting your faith. You need to continue making moves of faith. You need to continue stepping up your game. I said you need to continue stepping up your game. Nobody becomes a Gideon or a Gideon soldier by not stepping up their game. You understand? The apex of your faith shouldn't be when you were saved. It should be now. Everybody say now. Yeah, the apex should be now. Right now. Everybody say right now. Now that was then, this is now. Say it again, right now. I just grew in faith right now. I just grew in faith right now because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm growing. I'm going to do things by faith that I don't want to do. I'm going to do things that are uncomfortable. I'm going to step out and do things by faith that my flesh hates to do. I'm going to give up things that my flesh doesn't want to give up. I'm going to invest in things that my flesh doesn't want to invest in. Because I'm doing those things by faith. Not because I'm, you know, this great person that wants to. It's because I'm a man of faith and I trust, I trust my faith in God more than I trust my own flesh. I don't know how many people can say that, but I can tell you this. I know exactly what my flesh wants to do. Huh? Hello, you, you perfect people. I said, I know what my flesh wants to do. And I know what my faith in God tells me to do. Now, if I'm obedient to what my flesh wants, flesh wants to do, I sure wouldn't be here. Now, I've been working a long time to get my flesh under subjection to where it wants to do what my faith wants to do. But I'm still, a, I'm still in process. I'm still working. Amen? Sometimes my faith wants me to fast, but my flesh wants a donut. Last night it wanted chocolate pie. Then right before it went to sleep, it wanted Jerry Garcia ice cream. Are y'all hearing me? Huh? And what it needed was a salad. So the apex of your faith shouldn't be when you were saved. It should be now. Our degree of faith in the Lord affects every area of your life. Every area. Everybody say degree. Anybody have a degree? My daughter has a couple. Anybody have a degree? Yeah, I mean, a lot of work, right? It takes a lot of work to get a degree. Amen? We invest a lot of time to get a degree. Some of you have degrees and you don't even know it. You have degrees... Some people that are working in fields where they have to go through. Even Matt uh, has degrees because he had to go through uh, schooling and things for the jobs that he does. And, and uh, you, you know, he, uh, Pastor Mike, he has a degree. He just don't know it. He has a degree in the profession in which he works. He can train other people. He has a degree. Amen. It may, be, it may not be written down and on a document, but he has a degree. And, and, and see, that's how I look at this when I look at faith. Our degree in faith, our degree of faith in the Lord it affects every area of our lives. Now, in the world, when the enemy said, I'll be like the Most High, I'll exalt myself above his throne, the, the world really tries to make a big deal out of stuff like that. Like, I have a degree. You have a degree what? In sewage? Huh? Yeah, maybe you do. But do you have a degree in faith? I know I have a degree in sewage. It runs downhill. Amen? Every area. It'll affect every area of your life. Every area, man. It'll affect you financially. It'll affect you physically. It'll affect you mentally. It'll affect you spiritually. Your degree of faith in the Lord affects every area. Our thoughts, our attitudes, our, the way we pray, the way we behave, the way we believe. I mean, like when you have to, when somebody tells you something and it's based upon maybe fact, and you want to believe that, but it's not necessarily the truth. 
We base a lot of things on the fact. We believe a lot of reports of the world. 2,000 years ago, it was a fact that a virgin could not conceive a child, but it was not the truth because 2,000 years ago, a virgin did conceive a child huh? by an invisible entity, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. There's a word for you when you think about that too, that degree word. When we face affliction, do we only notice the suffering and the impossibilities or do we see past all that stuff and see the greatness of what God can do? Hello? I've been working my faith to see all of that's going on in the world as what God can do. What God is going to get out of this. What's going to, what the glory that God is going to get out of all of this. That God is going to bring restoration to his people. And, the, and his people are going to give him glory. And the world can see that God has restored his people. And because of that, they'll see the glory of the Lord. And we'll have a great revival. Can you say amen? And there will be a great restoration because people will begin to come back to the Lord that have walked away. So when we face affliction, we need to see past all that. Listen to me. I say this all the time, and I want you to understand this, that faith moves the hand of God. That we do not have power, but we have power to overcome. We can't raise the dead, but the power of God in us by faith can raise the dead. That means that we raise the dead, but it's the power of God in us. There's power in the operation of faith in God. And I want to say that, faith in God. Everybody say faith in God. I'm not talking about faith in faith. I'm not talking about you name it, claim it, train it, because you want it, and mama said you could have it. I'm not talking about all that man be I'm talking about faith in God. When you have faith in God, you want to do what God says. You want to have what God says. You want to be what God says. Amen. You lose sight of what, how you want it and how you're, you're, you thought you were going to get it and you begin to focus on what God said you could have and what God said you could get. But there's power to influence the very foundations of all creation by faith. To move mountains. Why? Because faith moves the hand of God in circumstance and situation. <coughs> Faith-filled words that are in the will of God and the plan of God and the purpose of God See, God is not afraid to release, to release power to you when he can trust you. God's not a re afraid to release his anointing in you when he can trust you, when he approves of you. God will release what needs to be released in you when he can trust you. But God will also use a jackass. Sometimes a jackass gets used and all of a sudden, he, all of a sudden they think that they, they're God's gift. No, you're just a jackass that God used. I don't want to be a jackass. I want to be used as a child of the Most High God. Can you say amen? Yeah, I said it. Faith can influence your emotions. When our minds are flooded with doubt and anxiety and fear, it's faith, people. It's faith. When we wrestle, are you listening? When we wrestle, wrestle with our own reasoning and our own insecurities, it's faith that we must muster up. It's faith in God. It's faith in what God says and what God says about us and what God says for us and where God is taking us and what God has promised us. It's God. It's faith in God. What he says about you. Not what the world says about you. Not what your mom and daddy said. Not what your school teacher said. It's what God says about you that matters. An ever-increasing faith must be Ever increasing. <laughs> I said an ever increasing faith must be ever increasing. Listen to this. 
Faith is not simply to, to, to go uh, Faith is not just, you know, you don't, you don't muster up your faith just to go through. Or you don't muster up your faith just to overcome. You don't muster up your faith just to move mountains. Faith is not, faith is for all that, but that's not, faith is to live by. Are you hearing that? I said faith is not just to, to, to go through, you know, or to overcome or to, to, to climb a mountain or to say to that mountain, be thou removed. But faith is to live by. We have to start living by faith, people. You say, I don't know what that means. That's the problem. You really don't. And I'm trying to tell you. It's by putting your trust in God like never before and being obedient to the things of the Lord. That's how your faith gets increased. Everybody says, why well, does God give you more? No. It gets stronger. God doesn't give you more. It gets stronger. It gets stronger. It's ever increasing. It gets stronger. Faith reveals the things of God, and it prepares us. Faith is what makes us more than a conqueror. It's faith that makes you more than a conqueror. Faith makes us more than a survivor. It equips us to destroy the works of the devil in our lives and those around us. And, and, and if you try to do that without faith, Right now, the works of the devil need destroying. I don't know about you, but the works of the devil need destroying. And we must have a growing faith. Can you say amen? I'm glad there's a little breeze out here today. It doesn't bother me too bad. I got this plant thing. God wants us to not only remain steadfast through adversity, but he wants us to be steadfast all the time. Hello? Hello? And when adversity comes, grow. Not only growing a stationary, you know, in our in a stationary position, but moving forward in the Lord. And you have to make a choice, man. I mean, I hope, man, if I could get anybody to really listen to me today about this prick in your heart. Some people say, I, I'm barely holding on. And I'm like, what are you holding on to? What do you mean? Right? I'm barely, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm just barely holding on. And I'm like, holding on to what? Because I don't think God is a barely God in any major measure. He's more than enough. Are you understanding this? I mean, He's more than enough. My faith is in the more than enough God. It's not just enough, it's more than enough. Always been more than enough. More than I can think or even understand. Faith will give you strength. It'll give you strategy. It'll give you endurance. It's faith. Yeah, I'm preaching on faith today. Can you believe it? Let me give you a prime example of faith. A little boy named David came down to bring his brothers some lunch who were in the army of Israel. When he got there, they were all dressed up like soldiers, but they were hiding in their tents. They had become fearful, and they found a comfortable place to be fearful. So they went in their tents, and they were shaking in their boots, and there was a Philistine army, and they had this giant named Goliath. These Philistines had been mocking God, scarfing, scoffing at God, cursing at God, belittling God, while Israel's army, God's great army, was in their tents talking about, what do you want to eat? I don't know, what do you want to eat? I don't know what he want to eat. I don't know what he want to eat. Jesse sends his son David, his youngest son, down there with some food for the brothers. He goes down there and he sees it all. He starts saying, "What are y'all, man? What's going on? You got what's up with you guys?" They told him, "You shut up, you little punk. Shut your mouth. Who you think you are? Come down here, all puffed up in pride, trying to tell us we soldiers, we bad, we Christian, man. We oh, man of God." They're like, well, well, then why ain't you out there doing something about it? They're trying to make a mockery of God. He goes, I'm, I'm going to go out. I'll do it. I'm going to go out there and destroy that giant. I'm going to go out there and fight God's battle. 
He might come to me with a spear and a sword, but I come to him. I'm going to go to, against him in the name of the Lord. This devil, this Philistine has no power. David began to tell him what he's going to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you down, and then I'm going to cut your head off with your own sword. The Bible says that David grabbed his sling and began to run towards Goliath. And when he did, he swooped down and he picked up five smooth stones, put them in his satchel, took one, put it in his sling, and flung it forward into the forehead of Goliath. We can stand in the camp and talk about how faithful we are all we want. That we're soldiers of the Lord, but a real soldier of the Lord was running toward the battle. The real soldier didn't even have his stones yet when he took off. He didn't have the stones in his satchel when he said, I'm going to destroy you. He was running towards the enemy when he got his weapons. Hello? He was running towards the enemy. The revelation in that is that Goliath had four uh, uncles from the same giant tribe. That's why he picked up five stones. Huh. Think about that one. Let me make one thing clear. Faith is not a means by which we get God to do what we want. That is a false interpretation of faith. I said faith is not a means by which we get God to do what we want. Faith moves the hand of God, but it moves it in the will of God. Huh? Listen, you can go stand at the Porsche dealer all day long and say, I claim it in the name of Jesus, I'm having faith for it. If it's God's will, he'll probably give you a job where you can make enough money to buy it. But if it's not God's will, you can claim it all you want. And if you do go out and get it, you're going to get it out of the will of God, and you're going to have to pay for it out of the will of God. Huh? Faith is not a promise to rescue you from trials, persecution, suffering. Faith is to get you through Trials, persecution, and suffering. Faith is where you place your belief. And to grow you through it. To grow you through it. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 27 that we are called to endure as seeing him who is unseen. Moses was called to endure as seeing God as who was unseen. How are we people of faith so easily shaken how are we I can't tell you people of faith aren't easily shaken because they are and I believe it's because they're still trying to live off the same measure which they were dealt rather than exercising it and growing it stronger and stronger and stronger I mean if you don't step out and do something uncomfortable if you don't plant some seeds, if you don't do something there, I can tell you that, 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 I mean, like, if I was to ask you, are you growing in your faith, or is your measure being depleted? Ooh, think about that. Are you actually growing in faith, or is the faith that you were dealt being depleted? Are you using it up? I mean, did you used to be a giver, but now you're not? Did you used to be faithful, and now you're not? Did you used to be committed, and now you're not? Sounds like your faith is being depleted. Did you used to, hello, were you used to, did you used to stand on top of the mountain? Now you just look at it and wish it was gone? Did you used to be a climber, a mover, and a shaker? Now you're just moved and shaken? Are you hearing me? Some have stopped trusting God. Some have stopped giving. Some have stopped seeking. Some have stopped serving because life got so pleasant. So adversity comes and now you don't know what to do. There are others. The ones I like to call the true worshipers. Come on. They have stepped up their faith through this season. They walk through all types of spiritual warfare. Man, I don't know about you, but let me tell you something. I ain't boasting about myself whatsoever, but I know people that have walked through.
through all kinds of spiritual warfare. I know people, I'm going to tell you, there's people right here at this church, they have stepped up their faith, they've stepped up to their A, a game, they have stepped up in every avenue of their life that they can step up, and God is still saying, you got more, step it on up some more, and God is challenging us, I feel the Spirit of the Lord is challenging us through this time to not lay down and die, but to rise up and fight. Fight the good fight. I can tell you that the last, at the last of it, when you stand before the Lord, he's not going to say, you know, enter in my okay servant. Enter in my uh, servant that was obedient once in a while. But he's going to say my good and faithful. 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 My challenge to you is you, you better get creative in your faith and step up your faith game. If, if, if you want to walk victoriously, step up your faith game. Amen? Uh, you say, oh, man, I've heard it before. You know what? And you're going to hear it again. I hope you have heard it before because now you know that it's bringing confirmation to what God said to you before. I hope that, you, I hope that this gets down in your spirit. I hope it gets in your head and bounces back and forth and courses through your mind for the next few months. I hope that everything that God drops in us takes root. I hope that you're smart enough to right now say, I want to be fertile ground. I want all of this word to take root in my I don't want you, I already know that. that I've heard that message. I, got, I know that one. I know that. I heard that preach. I heard Vincent Franklin preach. I heard I heard Bishop Bilkey preach that one time. Man, I heard Brother Hooks preach that. I heard Pastor preach that last year. And you know what? Shut up. Listen. You didn't hear nothing until you start doing it. When you're doing it, you can say, I heard it. That's why you get a spanking when your mama says, did you hear me? Yes. Did you hear me? Yes, I did. But you didn't do it. I didn't hear you. You said you heard me. I, I, uh, now you're lying. Now you get two spankings. You, you wasn't obedient and you lied. Do you hear me? My sheep know my voice. Are you hearing what the Lord is saying to us today? I hear you, Lord. Come on, I hear you, Lord. I'm hearing you. And the evidence of hearing the Lord is obedience. My challenge to you, right? That's my challenge. That's the challenge of the Lord. Get creative in your faith. Get creative in your walk with God. Get obedient. Begin to move into those uncomfortable areas. Break out in prayer and worship. Just, huh? Next time you're frustrated, I don't care if you're standing in, in Walmart, just start singing. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless, bless the Lord. Yes, I will. I will praise his name. I will praise his name. I will praise, praise his name. Are you hearing me? Step on out. And you begin to overcome, see? We overcome and we got to speak what we seek. We got we to open our hearts and our minds. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I want to be that person of faith. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm living by faith, and my faith is ever increasing. I'm growing. If I, if I was, if God challenged me to give a dollar, I'm giving two. If God challenged me to pray a half an hour, I'm going to pray an hour. If God challenged me to go a mile, I'm going two miles. Are you hearing me? If God challenged me to shut up for a day, I'm shutting up for two days. Y'all get that? Let's stand. Let's raise our hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray every word, God, that you've dropped in the spirits and hearts of your people today be sealed by a seal of the Holy Spirit. I rebuke the enemy that comes immediately to steal the word. I rebuke the circumstances and situations that come to rebuke the word. I rebuke every devil out of hell, every, every, every bit of flesh that tries to inject itself into my heart and mind to steal this word. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke it, and I plead the blood of Jesus over my heart and mind, over the lives of your people right now, God.
Father, let it be sealed. Let it be done. Let it be confirmed in the name of Jesus right now. Let every person that will receive what God is saying. Let every person that will, I said every person that will, voluntarily will, rise up by faith and begin to live the life that you've called them to live, God. Be who you call them to be. God, I pray the prayer of faith over their life, that I speak it forth right now, that everyone that is willing to receive, that your life will never be the same. You are going to begin to rise and walk in victory like you never have. If you were victorious yesterday, you're going to be more victorious today and even more tomorrow in the name of Jesus. I speak forth healing. Come on, the healing of God. By his stripes we are healed. I speak forth healing. In the name of Jesus. Healing in our bodies, healing in our minds, healing in our finances, healing in our marriages, healing in our homes, healing in our families. In the name of Jesus, are you hearing me? I pray the prayer of faith. And I rebuke discouragement, despondency, distress in the name of Jesus. I rebuke disease and viruses. Are you hearing me? In the name of Jesus. I speak right now the creative forces of God come alive in you and begin to do a new thing in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus, come on. Right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that from day on, from this day on, your life is not going to step backwards, that you're going to step forward. Come on. You're going to move on up in God. You're not going to stay stagnant. You're not going to become stagnant, but you're going to move up from precept to precept, from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me right now? Come on. Are you hearing me right now? I pray over our cities, our government, our state, our country, our nation in the name of Jesus. Come on. Devil, you won't have this country. You might be the prince of the power of the air, but we serve the God of all creation. Come on, the almighty God, and in the name of Jesus. We're against the plans of the devil. We call the plans of the devil null and void. Come on. I said we call the plans of the devil null and void in the name of Jesus. The devil has no power over you. He's a liar. Everything he says is a lie, and that's the truth. From this day forward, you're going to take a step out of the old, and you're going to step into the new. I said you're going to step out of the old, and you're going to step into the new in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, let it be done unto me. In Jesus' name, I receive it. Let's give the Lord some praise today. Come on. Hey guys, listen, I'm hoping that by next Sunday we have the tent set up. We'll stagger the chairs so everybody's six feet apart. However, that's going to work, except for families can be together and all that. It won't be quite as, you know, out in the sun. But I kind of dig this. I'm good with all this. Bring your own chairs. Bring your lounge chairs. We have chairs, but bring your lounge chair if you want one. Uh, don't forget Thursday Night Live. You guys get on Facebook and begin to watch us live. We're going to be streaming and all that good stuff. We're going to be doing streaming and YouTube very shortly with all this camera stuff we, we purchased. Um, and listen to me, man. Put your faith in God. Don't let the enemy rob you. Don't let the enemy rob you. Do what God is saying to do. Amen? God bless you. I love you. I'll see you all here, there. Amen. Amen.